<laughs> Can I disagree? <laughs> no, you cannot disagree. I cannot disagree. You have to agree with everything I say. No, <laughs> Somebody has to. <laughs> well, uh, I don't have my own opinion. At least while we're here, right? Oh, that's right. Yeah. At least while we're here. <laughs> we're here. No, he got the When you do talk, talk nice and loud. <laughs> what? Then you get the cut. Okay. Larry, you were at Larry and Alex Dorset, Dorset's house, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Remember, okay, great. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Is Ron just sitting here? I'll see. He's going to be sitting down right like now. That's. I'm on fire. Okay, so what's the story about the room? He'll be here in about 15 minutes. Well, okay, very I'm very photoshy. <laughs> Hey Gary, uh, some of the people, that, well, a lot of the people here are really new to the congregation. Mm -hmm. uh, you may only know about amazing. four or five faces here. Mm -hmm. So oh, good, thank you. there was a question as to the connection between you, Project Chofa, and Fellowship, how it came into being. And maybe you can share a little bit of the history. Well, I'll do the best I can, because it, <laughs> it is a little bit confusing. The whole thing is very confusing. Yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so this is myself. I'm running the, the camera now. Yeah. Okay. My name is Gary Cooperberg. I uh, live in Kiriatarpa. You are now in my home. This amazing home. That uh, that's also a story I have to tell you about a little bit later. Uh, my wife and I made Aliyah in 1979, a long time ago, with. Uh, Three children. We had two children born here in, in Israel, and now we have uh, eight grandchildren. And we're we're seeing we're seeing blessings, just blessings, nothing more than blessings. And and it's it's all miracles. I must tell you, and I mean this sincerely, everything that's happened in our lives are miracles. They're inexplicable. And. Uh, Look a little bit that too. Uh, Roger wants to uh, discuss how this all got started, by the show for and everything. It had started quite a while ago. Uh, John Klein came with a group from Fellowship. Let me help. You. And uh, it was during the holiday of Sukkot. And uh, they sort of came unannounced. I wasn't quite prepared for that. Kind of like us. Kind of like me. Yeah. <laughs> so I invited them to come up to my sukkah. It was at the roof of the building where we used to live. And uh, we had a little chat. And uh, we became friends. Uh, let's go back before that. Even. For, let, let's let's ask a more basic question. Where does a religious Jew find a connection with Christians? A religious Jew living in Israel in, in Hebron. How does he find a connection with Christians? I didn't wake up one morning and say, I'm going to go look for Christians. <laughs> <laughs> so how did this happen? Well, I was volunt a voluntary worker uh, for public relations in, in, in the town of Hebron, downtown. Uh, I wanted to help them attract visitors and make the place a little more uh, welcoming. You know, the, the name Hebron it always conjures up uh, danger. People are afraid to come down here. Tour guides don't take people to the Hebron. They're afraid. And Some do. Uh, I want to try to change that. <laughs> to change that image. So I was trying to come up with an idea, and I said, you know, I know this fellow in Jerusalem who gives walking tours of Jerusalem. He works at a hotel. We'll give him a call, see what ideas he can give me. So I called him up, and he was very congenial on the phone until I said one word. Hebron. That's the word. <laughs> and he almost hung the phone up on my ear. He said, wow. we are an international hotel. We cannot get involved in religion or politics. <laughs> <laughs> well, this man gives walking tours of Jerusalem. And I want to give walking tours of Hebron. What, what is the difference? I couldn't figure that out. So I realized I'm not going to get any help from this guy. So I discovered that in all the hotels in Jerusalem, they have these little handouts, these little magazines that tell you all the sites and things you can do in Jerusalem. I decided, let me take out an ad. I went there and I, I took out an ad, inviting people to come on a free walking tour of Hebron. Just call me up, 
get on the local bus, come on down, I'll take you around the Cape Cod Pela, show you all around the road, and then get back in the bus and no charge. Well, I wasn't exactly deluged with, with responses, <laughs> but people did respond. But to my amazement, the great majority of the people who came were Christians. Now, I didn't have a special tour for Christians. I didn't know how to, so I said, you know, I did the same tour I get Jews, what, what, what are we going to do? And to my amazement, instead of getting into arguments like I got into with Jewish people, they all said, this is the best tour I ever had, the best part of my visit to Israel. And I, I couldn't believe it. He, he said people that really do agree with everything I had to say, no arguments. Uh, on the contrary, I got compliments, and I, I couldn't figure this out. What's going on here? You know? And I started looking around, and I discovered that there are several organizations in Jerusalem, Christian organizations, who are really strong Zionist people. The Christian embassy in Jerusalem. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. What kind of embassy? Were they? They're a nation? They built something they called the Christian embassy as an example to all of the nations of the world that their embassies belong in Jerusalem, not in Tel Aviv. Amen. Right. I was very impressed with that. I, I really was. And I became friendly with the people there. And uh, I'm still friendly with them. Uh, they had their own problems. You know, Jan Willem uh, uh, was thrown out, and he made his own organization now. Right. And I'm so friendly with him, too. And uh, I haven't been in touch with them for a while, but we really became good friends. Uh, Ray Sanders of the Christian Friends of Israel. We had a good relationship, too. And uh, Bridges of Peace. Mm -hmm. These are all people who are sincere Zionists, people who really want to see Israel the Jewish state it was meant to be. And I wish we had people like that in the Knesset. <laughs> we don't have Zionists in the Knesset, unfortunately. Wow. We have politicians. Mm -hmm. Diplomats, politically correct people who don't want to rock the boat, mm -hmm. who think that we are dependent upon the American dollar and not upon God. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have terrorism and that's why we have problems. So. Right. <clears throat> people who think that if we give away our country, that we're going to get peace. Mm -hmm. And it is so amazing how people can look <coughs> such nonsense. Mm -hmm. I mean, anybody who has eyes in their heads could look at a map and see how much land the Arabs need. I mean, they're desperate. They have mountains of land, huge, huge expanses of land. And you look on the map, it's a little tiny dot called Israel. And we can't have peace unless we take part of that dot away and give it to the Arabs. That's supposed to make sense. And yet everybody believes it. The, the biggest condemnation we get is Israel's building homes. They're throwing bombs in Beersheba, and oh, we have to make peace. But when, they, when we build homes, uh, that, that we're, we're, causing obstacle, we're making obstacles to peace. There's no logic to any of this. It makes no sense. It's ridiculous. I mean, we could talk about you know, religious idealism, and we could talk about principles and miracles, but what about common sense? <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. I, I always tell people who come to visit Israel, so if you're looking for logic, you came to the wrong country. You don't have it. <laughs> and it's true. Everything is illogical and rational. This house is a miracle. Andrea and I do not have a lot of money. We never did. We lived in a, a third-story uh, apartment not far from here. And one day, Andrea said, you know, they're building new homes. Let's just take a look. So she took me here. And we came and we looked. And I said, Andrea, what are you wasting my time for? We can't afford this. This is far more expensive than, than we could possibly afford. What kind of crazy uh, uh, contractor builds apartments like this when our prime minister is in Camp David giving it away? Talk about logic. This is a tremendous investment. And the guy's giving it to Arafat. Yeah. The very day that the newspapers were, were showing everybody in Israel all the lands that, that, that Barack was prepared to give to Arafat for peace, including Kiryat Arba, Andrea and I were sitting in an office right here at Kirit signing a contract for a mortgage in an apartment we couldn't afford. <laughs> well, Barack is history, and we have our house. Don't ask me how. I, I really live in the same thing myself. We borrowed money from everybody we knew. We took out a 30-year mortgage, which I couldn't imagine how, at my age it would give me. <laughs> but uh, when my father passed away, he left me a bit of money, and I took all of it and bought my mortgage back. So this house belongs to us. Amen. And uh, I don't understand it. 
every time I look here and I say, I can't believe it. It's a tremendous miracle. God works in mysterious ways. And my, mm -hmm. my uh, third daughter, my, the baby who became a great aliyah with us, now has our old apartment, which is raising her five children, wow. where she grew up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, I mean, we're, we're, we're breaking the rules, we're, we're expanding, we're having natural growth, unfortunately, mm -hmm. Mrs. Clinton hates natural growth, <laughs> but that's what we're doing, we're having plenty of natural growth, and it's such a pleasure to watch these little darlings come in here every time, you know, mm -hmm. have our grandchildren living so close to us. Mm -hmm. right. There are, obstacles, there are obstacles to peace each yeah. time uh, one of my children have a new uh, <laughs> child, they're an obstacle to peace. He, he, uh, Gary wrote uh, the, Amer the Americans a letter uh, and he signed it from one of our, our granddaughters. I am an obstacle to your peace. Mm. I am four days old. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's mind blowing what's going on. And you know when people say Hebron, uh, when all the history of all the bomb uh, bombs going off, I was scared to leave Kirit Arba. So they say this is unsafe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is unsafe, but anywhere, any, any place is unsafe. Mm -hmm. But the feeling of unity and being together, you're never going to find anywhere, but mm -hmm. I don't know elsewhere, but this, uh, the Jewish community mm -hmm. is uh, just like one unit. Mm -hmm. There were killings in, in France uh, two days ago, and they're being brought here to be they're buried. Mm -hmm. It's like one of our children, God forbid, was killed. Mm -hmm. right. We all feel the pain, and, and it's a uh, horror. Mm -hmm. I, I can't stop uh, what the government does. I can't change the government. I also have learned that I can't uh, get horribly upset and go screaming and yelling. All I can do is stay in my country and love my country with my whole being. And that's what I do. And it's really, really great. That's my part. I just came here to live and make, uh, make my family and watch them grow. It's a real, real, it's an amazing pleasure. Uh, some of the grandchildren are a little older than that they can walk to us by themselves. And they're a little knocks. <laughs> it's amazing. And it, miracles happen in this country. Amazing, amazing miracles. Just that uh, we're here and all the, all the countries of the world want us out. And everybody, they keep trying to give peace, peace. I, I like the peace is, uh, you can spell it two ways. They want to give a piece of our country, a little, little, little mm -hmm. piece. Mm -hmm. Would you give up a piece of, let's say, your living room for right. peace? Right. Why do I want that? Mm -hmm. But I'm not the political person. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a quiet little wife that agrees with everything the president said. <laughs> <laughs> so he said from the beginning, I'll just sit here now and agree. I'm a good wife. I think that he always has the last word. Yes, ma'am. It's <laughs> <laughs> like my wife, I like you. <laughs> this is the land of miracles, no question about it, and our life is a life full of miracles. When we moved to Kiryadarva with three little girls, Andrew was pregnant with our son, and he was born on uh, Shabbat before Sukkot uh, in Jerusalem. And uh, because he was born at Shabbat, his Brit Milah, the covenant of circumcision, mm -hmm. was also on Shabbat. It was a very special thing. Mm -hmm. And because he was on Shabbat, we had a special opportunity that we didn't even realize. The cave of Machpelah is a place where we go to pray. Mm -hmm. In those days, we were not permitted to pray in the large hall of Isaac. That was a place where Arabs prayed and, and Jews could visit if they wanted to. But just before we moved into Kiryat Arba, the government gave us permission on Shabbat only to pray in that large room. Mm -hmm. So as it turned out, we had the Brit Milah in a place where it would have been impossible any other time to have the Brit Milah. So we made history in a 2,000 year old building. That's a pretty big trick. <laughs> he was the first 
Jew to be circumcised in the hall of Isaac in the cave of Machpelah ever. Wow. And we didn't even know it at the time. Wow. Yeah, the truth, I wanted them to go into the hall of, of Abraham because that seemed more appropriate. And somebody just with a, a very strong uh, you know, desire, no, no, do it here, do it here, do it here. I had no idea what he meant by that, but I felt his, you know, sincerity. So we had near the door. There was a door between Abraham and, and, and Isaac, so we had it near the door. And we, we made history that day. And this little boy who we brought up in Kiryatarbo, who learned at the schools in Kiryatarbo, was taught by the, uh, the teachers who are graduates of, of the yeshiva in Kiryatarbo. He grew up breathing being Jewish. His Jewish identity is, is complete. It's like part of the, the, the stones. He's part of, of everything here. And today, he also is part of the problem of, of, of uh, natural growth. <laughs> he got married. He bought an apartment in Kirit Arba, renting an apartment in Kirit Arba. He just uh, gave birth, his wife gave birth to his second daughter. And he's a rabbi. These are blessings that I have. Miracles and blessings. None of this could happen if I didn't come to Israel. None of it. Who knows what my life would be like if I had come to Israel. So I have nothing but blessings. And uh, I'm